Hello everyone, I'm Henry Higgins and welcome to our predictions for NXT TakeOver Vengeance Day which is taking place tomorrow at the time of recording this video. Uh, it's just me this time, Josh is here but he's not feeling too great so he's in his room uh, playing online with some friends. Uh, I think he's playing Plants vs Zombies Garden Warfare. So it's just me this time out. So it should be a slightly shorter video than the previous prediction ones. But we'll get right through it. And as always, let me know in the comments below if you agree with our picks. Or if you have some other thoughts on who's going to walk away with the victory at this show. As before, we're just going to read through the card as it's listed on Wikipedia. Uh, from top to bottom, there's five matches on the card, two tag team matches, a triple threat and two singles titles matches. And up first is a triple threat match for the NXT Women's Championship. It's Io Shirai defending her title against Tony Storm and Mercedes Martinez. Uh, with regards to this one, I love Io with the belt. I think she's phenomenal. Uh, Tony Storm has been one of my favourites for a long time, going back to her time on the NDUK UK scene, uh, being from the UK, we got to see a lot of videos online of her through the UK promotions, and Mercedes Martinez, who has been phenomenal since coming back from her injury, uh, she was phenomenal just before it in NXT as well, uh, when she officially signed, she's an amazing talent, and for me, I think Mercedes Martinez is going to take this one. Uh, Io Shirai's had a great run with the belt, Tony Storm has plenty of time ahead of her to have a great run with the belt, Mercedes Martinez is hitting the peak of her career, I believe, at this point, performance-wise and ability-wise. I think she's going to take this match and go on to have a wonderful feud with a number of different women on the NXT roster. Um, Io Shirai can then maybe move on to something else, maybe even move on up to the main roster. Um, she's had a wonderful run in NXT for a couple of years now. So, for me, I'm going with Mercedes Martinez to walk out with the NXT Championship, uh, the NXT Women's Championship, though I don't think she'll pin Io Shirai. I think, personally, she's going to pin Tony Storm. Uh, keeps Io strong. Tony can come back from that. And it gives Io the perfect reason to have a rematch against Mercedes where Mercedes will retain the belt and that will be Io's swan song to send her up to Raw Smackdown whereas Tony Storm and Mercedes Martinez can continue on or Tony Storm can have a feud with a few other people um, but the future is bright for Tony Storm she's ridiculously young so many years ahead of her Mercedes Martinez will be your new champion when the bell rings Second match on the card is the finals for the Women's Dusty Cup, uh, the Dusty Tag Team Classic, the first ever women's version of the event. And we have Dakota Kai and Raquel Gonzalez teaming up against the slightly wacky team of Ember Moon and Shotzi Blackheart. Uh, they've been fantastic to watch as they go on and they've gelled really well as a team. Ember has hit her strikes and she's came back from her injury. Shotzi, I've always been a fan of Shotzi's as well, similar to my story about Tony Storm, I've been a fan of Shotzi uh, from her time in Evolve, um, obviously watching that, going back to, I mean, I've been watching Evolve since Drew McIntyre went there, uh, and kind of stuck around watching the events for Evolve as well, and Shotzi Blackheart is an amazing talent, um, I just think she's wonderful. But I don't think it's going to be enough for them to take on and take out the team of Dakota Kai and Raquel Gonzalez. Um, Dakota Kai, ever since she turned heel, which was at War Games um, over a year ago now, has been fantastic. Injuries notwithstanding. And Raquel Gonzalez, since she made her shocking debut, has also been phenomenal and she's been built and pushed. She's been so dominant. Uh, she was dominant in the War Games match we just had in November of 2020. And she's shown no signs of that dominance slipping. And I can see them copying the blueprint, which worked so well with Shawn Michaels and Diesel and Triple H and Batista in the same way, where the big monster bodyguard type character gets fed up being manipulated and 
attempted humiliation on the part of the smaller member of that group. And I think Raquel Gonzalez, once she turns face, is going to be a mega star in NXT and WWE as a whole. So I think for now, Dakota Kai and Raquel Gonzalez are going to be your winners of the first ever Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic for the women. I think they're going to use that. I think Dakota Kai is possibly going to take the pin on Shotzi Blackheart after Raquel Gonzalez has done the work. Maybe even begin the slow breakup of them in the face turn of Raquel Gonzalez from now. Uh, simply because she will say she's the one who did the work. She's the one who won. Raquel Gonzalez would be nothing without her. Blah, blah, blah. You know the usual stick. Uh, so I'm going for the heels on this one. Dakota Kai and Raquel Gonzalez will be... The winners of the first ever Women's Dusty Woods Tag Team Classic Tournament. Third match on the card is also a Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic Final, this time for the men. And it is MSK, formerly the Rascals from TNA, from Impact, uh, Nash Carter and Wes Lee, taking on the grizzled young veterans, uh, James Drake and Zach Gibson. And as much as it's, they're my hometown boys... Well, home country boys, uh, GYV. I picked them to win the whole thing last year. Uh, in fact, last year's tournament, we predicted, me and Josh predicted the entire thing, but the final, it's been our best run at predictions we've ever had. We got every match right bar the last one. I do believe that this year, Grizzled Young Veterans are going to go one step further. They are going to win the tournament this year. Uh, MSK, they're just in the door. They'll get plenty of time to build themselves up, maybe take it next year. Grizzled Young Veterans, they need to go that one step further than they did last year. Build on that. Go for the tag team titles. Cement themselves in NXT. Uh, they are a fantastic team. Zach Gibson is just a heat machine. Uh, James Drake is the perfect partner for him. They are both ridiculously talented. And having followed them again on the UK scene, uh, watching them go through NXT UK all the way through to NXT itself, they have been phenomenal the entire way out. This is their coming out party uh, for the American audience fully. They are going to win this tournament. They are going to go from strength to strength. They are going to win the Tag Team Championships, which they do receive a shot at for winning the tournament. Same with the women. They got a shot at the Women's Tag Team Championships. And the Grizzled Young Veterans are going to be the Tag Team of 2021. They are going to be the Tag Team of NXT. And they are soon... And I apologise wholeheartedly for that impression going to be the NXT Tag Team Champions. Penultimate match on the card is singles match. It's for the NXT North American Championship. This is Johnny Gargano defending the belt against Kushida. And as much as I want Kushida to win, he has been kind of underutilized since coming to NXT. Um, but that has been a combination of injury and the whole lockdown thing and various other aspects now but he's back he's been back with a vengeance um, for a couple of months now but I don't see him taking the title from Gargano this time out uh, for whatever reason Austin Theory most likely uh, Johnny is going to retain his title he's either going to retain it on a disqualification or he's going to retain it with a snap pinfall on Kushida um, they could go down the route of Gargano losing the belt with backfiring interference from Austin Theory. But that whole faction has only really just started getting some traction. So I don't think they're going to break them up just yet. Um, so I think Kushida is just going to be overwhelmed by the numbers. Because there's also the entire Way um, faction which will probably get involved in some fashion. So through hook or by crook. Johnny Gargano will walk away with the North American Championship. Although I do believe Kushida will likely take it from him on the takeover. Uh, he might take it before then, before we get to the takeover. But I definitely think Kushida will get the belt at the WrestleMania weekend takeover. Whatever they call it. Uh, whatever date it's on. Because um, if WrestleMania is running two days, which will be the Saturday and the Sunday. Takeover will be the Friday. Will they do the Hall of Fame? 
this year as well. Because technically we've got two Hall of Fame classes to get through this year. Uh, we've got the, the group that were supposed to go in last year and we didn't have it, which is JPL and a few others. And then will they just not bother with the Hall of Fame class for 2021? I just moved the 2020 class to 2021. I'm sure we'll find out in the coming weeks. Uh, they haven't mentioned, as far as I can tell, they haven't mentioned the Hall of Fame at all on TV yet. As we lead in, normally they've started announcing people for it. So that could be interesting, but I'm kind of getting sidetracked here. Uh, Johnny Gargano will retain the North American Championship over Kushida in some fashion. So as we go into the last match, possibly the main event of the show... Uh, takeovers like to jumble up whether the title is the main event of the show or not. Uh, we have Finn Balor defending his NXT Championship against Pete Dunne. And it's interesting because, again, his his run as champion has been pretty well defined. It's been really characterised by hard-hitting matches, brutal without the hardcore violence style stuff. And... It's just been great to see. Obviously, he got curtailed a little bit with an injury after the Kyle O'Reilly match. They then had another wonderful match, uh, him and Kyle O'Reilly. And now he's defending against Pete Dunne, who has joined up with the Britain Brawlers, uh, Oni Lorcan and Danny Birch, and peripherally, uh, Pat McAfee, who hasn't been seen on NXT TV for a while, NXT TV for a while. Will he show up tonight? I don't know. However, I believe that Finn Balor is going to lose the NXT title to Pete Dunne. Whether that will be fair, I would like it to be a clean win, a fair win, um, by Pete Dunne. I would like him, obviously, heel tactics, he is a heel, um, but not with outside interference. Um, I would prefer the outside interference to wait until after the match. So that when Pete Dunne does win... Um, the Britain Brawlers, and maybe Pat McAfee jump in to wallop Finn Balor. Undisputed Era come out to make the save. Finn Balor joins Undisputed Era. That's what I'm going for there. But either way, I do believe Finn Balor is going to lose the belt to Pete Dunne, which in turn will set up uh, the WrestleMania takeover, a match between Pete Dunne and Karrion Cross, who never lost the belt. I remember Karrion Cross. Defeated Keith Lee for it and had to give it up the next day uh, through injury. And Finn Balor won the vacant belt. So I think Finn Balor's done enough to restore some stability to the title. He doesn't need it at this point in his career in NXT. He is going to lose the NXT Championship to Pete Dunne. Who is, from my mind, he's definitely one of the best in-ring performers in the world. Uh, not just with the moves, but with his mannerisms, his timing, his character, everything about him. Maybe his promo skills lack a little bit. Um, he definitely feels, with his promos at times, he feels like he's reading a script rather than speaking from the heart. Uh, and that's possibly because he is speaking from a script to a degree. Uh, but outside that, he has all the bases covered. He is going to run with the NXT Championship. Whether he gets past Karrion Cross, I don't know. Because he's another character that doesn't really need the title. Although it gives him some validation. Uh, but it'll be interesting to see what the fallout will be. Af but it will be interesting to see what the fallout will be after Finn Balor, uh, if I'm correct, joins up with the Undisputed Era. That would give the Undisputed Era... Four guys again, because I believe Bobby Fish is out still long term with a bit of an injury. And that would be the perfect team to go against Pat McAfee's boys. So we'll see where that goes. It is an exciting time. Takeovers rarely disappoint. Everyone on this card is capable of giving phenomenal matches. Everyone on this card is capable of stealing the show in their own way. I believe... Um, Balor versus P. Dunne could be match of the night, though MSK and GYV will definitely give them a run for their money in that regard. I would love, and I don't know how logistically they could maybe get it done, but the pushing shouldn't start press that MSK do. I would love to see that turned into a ticket to ride from uh, Zach Gibson. I just think, um, 
I just think visually it would look fantastic to see someone coming up from the shooting star press position, caught straight into a code breaker. That could even be the finish. Where would, that would be phenomenal if that's the finish. I'm just putting that in my head now. Uh, so we're going to have, if I'm correct, we're going to have two title changes, uh, one title retention, and obviously two future number one contenders for the women's and the NXT Tag Team Championships. So, if we go along the bottom of the screen here, we're going for Mercedes Martinez to be the NXT Women's Champion by the end of the night. We're going for Dakota Kai and Raquel Gonzalez being the first ever Women's Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic Cup winners. We're going for the Grizzled Young Veterans to go one better than they did last year and become the Men's Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic Cup winners. Uh, Johnny Gargano is going to retain his title over Kushida and Pete Dunne is going to end the night as the NXT champion as we go into a brand new era leading on to the road to WrestleMania's takeover. Who do you think is going to take the victory come the end of this show? Do you agree with our picks? Do you think we're completely wrong? Please let us know in the comments below or in the replies on Twitter and Facebook. But thank you very much for watching. Thank you for taking the time out of your day to spend it here with me going through these predictions. Have a wonderful weekend. Enjoy TakeOver when you get around to watching it. And we'll see you again soon. Uh, there is going to be an unboxing video this weekend as well. Still haven't decided what we're going to do. But stay tuned for other videos on the channel. Uh, there's going to be a movie review by the end of next week. Also keep an eye out for that. As I said, I'm going to be reviewing a movie called The Stylist. But thank you very much as I said. But stay safe. Wear a mask. Look after yourself. Look after each other. Like, share and subscribe. And I'll see you again soon. Goodbye.